Hi, I'm Cosimo della Santina, and in this presentation I will talk about a work that Professor Daniela Rus and I did about control-oriented modeling of soft robots. Let's consider this very general framework. We have a soft robot, we have a desired behavior, and we want to implement this behavior by means of feedback model-based control. A very common and successful strategy to achieve this goal is to describe our continuous system as a sequence of segment with constant curvature, obtain in this way a kinematic or dynamic model which is much, much simpler and low dimensional, and then use this low dimensional model to derive a model based control. And these are just few examples of soft robots controlled using this technique just to convince you about the feasibility. However, if we look at the problem from a more theoretical point of view, what we are doing here is that we are taking an infinite dimensional system and we are controlling it with a model, with a, with a robot design on a model which is much, much more simple and low dimensional. So one can ask how this on a theoretical level can even work. And although this question, I think it's quite interesting from a theoretical standpoint, from a practical standpoint, is even more important to understand what to do when the system doesn't work. So when, for example, when you take some gains with respect to some other, you observe reduced performance or you, obtain, or you observe some instability. A straightforward way to solve this, this problem would be to just take a less coarse discretization. However, when it comes to close the loop, it's not easy to understand how one should connect the state space of all these new segments to the state space of the simpler system that you used to develop the controller. What we argue instead in this work is that when you do model-based control with soft robots due to the complexity of the control problem, you have to think about models that are specifically tailored on the control application. In this paper, we derive such a model in terms of kinematics, in, some, in terms of its dynamics, and we draw some conclusions in terms of what we can do as model-based control. Let's consider now a segment of our soft robots. We will identify it with the behavior of its backbone. The configuration of the backbone can be described with a function which is called kappa that connects the each time and each position along the robot S with the local curvature. We assume this function to be analytic in S, and this allows to write it as an infinite summation of monomial terms in S. This in turn induces a quite straightforward way of approximated k kappa as a polynomial in S of order m with m as big as we want. We can now take theta as to be the configuration of our robots and it's now uh, something that stays in a space which is as dimension m plus 1 rather than infinity. Now we can evaluate the posture at each point s which has a solution in closet form and the configuration x and y which under a uh, hypothesis of dominant constant curvature allows as well a solution in closet form. Putting everything together, we have a complete description of the robot kinematics. More specifically, we have here the posture of each point along the robot for all times t. The first term of all these elements is what we expect to find in a constant curvature model. And then we have all the higher order perturbations. So the kinematics is done. In the paper, we derive all the other terms needed for the dynamics. Let's just go very quick through them for the sake of time. Inertia is, uh, is a general form 
formulation of the inertia matrix and the Coriolis matrix. Impedance, we have the stiffness characteristic and the damping characteristics. We have then a characteristic of the gravity field and an actuation field. We can now put everything together in a coherent model of our polynomial curvature segment. And just to convince you about the possibility of using such a model, I'm just showing some simulations of a robot starting with a quite strange initial condition subject to a constant torque and to gravity field. This is the same robot with half the mass. So now that we have our model in place, let's see how we can use it to, to actually do model-based feedback control. We have our robot, our segment, and we have now a way of connecting the evolution of theta with the evolution of tau. But what is maybe more interesting is the possibility of quite naturally divide the cost and curvature term from the remaining term describing the remaining part of the robot's dynamics uh, that are theta 1 to te theta m. We can now see uh, quite naturally that uh, a constant curvature based feedback controller just takes this part of the output and close the loop into the input. It's now interesting to use this framework to study uh, how theta z z d which is the, the, zero, the configuration of the zero dynamics of this dynamical system is influenced by the, this loop closure and we do that in the paper. And let's consider here instead how we can take into account these high order terms in closing the loop. Let's start from the simplest constant curvature based feedback controller that we can think of, which is the PD. And we propose to add to that a term, which is a sort of polynomial compensation of impedance and gravity terms, which takes uh, in account all the information that we have on the system, not just the cost and curvature part. But let's see how it works when we close the loop. On the left, you can see the effect on the robot that I showed you in the previous simulations uh, of a loop closure of a simple PCC-based PD controller. On the right, you see the behavior of the system when instead the proposed PD poly controller is used. Instead of focusing on the whole configuration of space evolution, it's probably more interesting to look at what's going on in, in terms of the cost and curvature term, which is what we, we actually want to regulate. Regulating the cost and curvature term with the knowledge of the only the cost and curvature term produces a steady state behavior which has an error which is around 50%. So instead of going at steady state at the desired minus 2, it goes to minus 0.5. Instead, if we add the polynomial compensation, what we get is that the cost and curvature term correctly reaches the desired value. And on the bottom right of the pictures, you can see the evolution of the control action for the two controllers. So, that's all for this presentation. I hope that I was able to convince you about the importance of considering together the modeling and the control problem when devising model-based controller for soft robots and about the possibility of using a piecewise a polynomial curvature approximation of the robot as a feasible solution for the extension of constant curvature models. That's all. Thank you very much for your attention. And of course, for any question you may have, do not hesitate to contact me.